And so we used social listening and social tools to figure out, okay, who else should we be talking to? And, you know, send very targeted, reach out to some of the executives, find out more. As you start to have some of these discussions, now you're armed with valuable intel that can open even more doors. So it's it's a gift that keeps on giving. And then on the flip side of that, as you also just alluded to, Tom, the scale approach is there because I can also do campaigns that build a growing community around what I'm trying to do. And then Brandon, like you said, I'm just continuing to try to grow that awareness until it moves into demand, until it moves into market. And guess what? When that need is clear and present, who are they going to engage? Somebody that's been top of mind, that has been professional, that has been adding value and putting things out there all along, not pitch slapping. And, and that is ultimately who they're going to buy with. Um, I think we've got to get away from that false sense of success that we might have gotten because one out of a thousand pitch slaps works. And you know we, we see it work and then we say, oh yeah, this, this works. I'm going to just keep doing this. No, we've got to find the process that is most conducive to creating relationships and investing in them over time. That's it. And buyers have so much more power now, right? And that's the thing that we forget. It's so easy for buyers to put their walls up and kick you out of their circle of trust. They can disconnect from you. They can mute you. They can uh, send you to spam. They can unsubscribe. They can ignore your calls. They don't have to return your voicemails. Like it's harder for us to move down the X axis, but our in some ways, but our behavior can move us down that X axis very quickly. 